my dear student good morning today i like to highlight all of you all of you one of the most important clinical uh, disease called rheumatic fever it is very much important in our clinical practice sometimes it is misdiagnosis sometimes over diagnosis very much difficult to diagnosis this is called rheumatic fever remember this it is one of the most important connective tissue disease now first of all you should know the what the definition definition of the rheumatic fever rheumatic fever may be defined as a multi system non separative inflammatory lesion of the joint heart central nervous system skin subcutaneous tissue which is staggering by group s protocol beta hemolyticus upper respiratory infection remember this group a s protocol beta hemolyticus or uh, Peringitis, upper respiratory infection. Remember this one. Now, who is culprit? Who is culprit organism responsible for this? This is group A, stroke beta hemolyticus, rheumatogenic strain, M protein, 1, 3, 5, 6, 18, 24. This is a culprit organism who is his concern with the rheumatic fever, but uh, rheumatic, uh, uh, nephrogenic, nephrogenic strain. M put in 12 and 49 is concerned with about post estrococcal gomonephritis already I told last classes. But rheumatic fever is concerned with rheumatogenic strain 1, 3, 5, 6, 18 and 24 M protein type is responsible for this disease. Remember this. First of all, you should know the pathogenesis of the disease. When the uh, when the Group A stroke beta hemolyticus, upper respiratory infection, sore short throat, then there is a release of antigen. Then antigen is, is, is stimulate the immune system of the body. It stimulates the immune system of the body and produces antibody, which cross reacts with the tissue glycoprotein of the joint, cardiac muscle, central nervous system, skin and subcutaneous tissue. It is called molecular mimicry. This is the type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Remember this. It is type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Remember this one. Next, how the patient, how the patient present to you? What is the clinical manifestation? What is the clinical manifestation of the patient? You should know fever and arthritis. Fever and arthritis first all. All large joint. All large risk character is migratory. Migratory folia arthritis and always it is involved in large joint. All the large joint is involved. You remember this one. Next, it is uh, arthritis is about 75%. Next one is carditis. There is pericarditis. That is pericarditis mean pericardial rub, pericardial equation, chest pain, pericarditis. Then myocarditis. Myocarditis means the conduction defect. There is ECG in ECG, that we are intermittently full on. Then, Sudanam Korea. Then, skin and sub Sudanam Korea. That is what is Sudanam Korea? It is an involuntary, purposeless, repetitive movements of the limbs, face, and trunk. Remember this. Now, you should know uh, what are the sign, what are the early sign of the Korea? What the early sign of the car drops thing just like this drops thing drops thing the early sign of the Korea then hand that you will be deteriorated then then there will be one oh, the outer stress hand you keep in the outer stand like this then wrist is flex but metacarpal joint is hyper extended this is called dinner for deformity if you outer stand head over the head then the pronation of the head, the pronation sign is positive. And frequent movements and frequent facial movement give rise to society smile, milk made grip, darting tongue, then psychological problem it is, this is emotional liability and all deep reflexes, all deep, deep reflexes will be, will be brisk, remember this, this is called Korea. The erythema marginatum. Erythema marginatum means map like pink case, pink rose color, map like rash of the skin. This is called uh, erythema marginatum. Then subcutaneous nodule. 
subpetal nodule smells it is a firm nodule over the bony prominent over the olecranon olecranon fossas over the medial medullus over the elbow joint rear joint knee joint and ankle joint this is called subcutaneous nodule remember this these are the this these are the clinical manifestation remember this i told to you next you go after this clinical manifestation then you should go the what are the investigation what are the investigation do for this rheumatic fever first of all complete blood count with c reactive protein complete blood count there will be polymorphonuclear leukocytosis and uh, full on uh, c reactive protein next next we go for next we go for uh, next we go for acute phase reaction acute phase reaction means yes our c reactive protein will be increased next one ecg on ecg there is a pr interval will follow on. then go for one x ray no no then we go for uh, uh, plus evidence of the stroke infection plus evidence of the stroke infection means uh, th positive thrush swab culture isolation of the organism from the thrush swab a raised acetider and other stroke antibody remember that this this is the evidence of the stroke infection next we go for doing one extra chest go for one extra chest to see the cardiomegaly and finally we go for do one echocardiography to see the any valve variability these are the all of the investigation remember this you book everything not mentioned in your book now how the rheumatic fever is diagnosed how the rheumatic fever is diagnosed very much important question the rheumatic fever is diagnosis by revised jones criteria revised jones criteria there is a five major criteria and four four minor criteria major criteria means that cardiitis arthritis chirinam korea erythema marginatum subcutaneous nodule these are five major criteria then minor criteria ke fever arthralgia acute phase reaction esr fury esr and c-reactive protein will be raised and we are interval following in an ECG plus evidence of the stroke infection means thrush positive thrush swab culture and raise aesotidia and other stroke antibodies this is the this is the Jones criteria this is the revised Jones criteria now the how you how you diagnose you should know how you diagnose the rheumatic fever rheumatic fever diagnose on the basis of the Jones criteria first all you know the age of the patient age of the patient is 5 to 15 years age of the patient is 5 to 15 years then two major criteria plus evidence of the recently group a stroke beta hemolyticus infection or one major two minor plus evidence of the evidence of the uh, recent stroke infection except the except this Jones criteria, there is other two situation. Except Jones criteria, there is other two criteria. No need to go for Jones criteria. One is indolent carditis, another one is chorea. If only chorea, you found only chorea or indolent carditis, no need to go for go for Jones criteria. This is enough to diagnose the rheumatic fever. But this now after diagnosis, then the treatment. What the treatment? Treatment should be given. Treatment should be given. First of all, you given the yeah, bed rest. Bed rest should be given until unless sign syndrome. Until unless sign syndrome comes to the, the normal position. Then antibody treatment for for aspiratic for aspiratic infection. One phenylethylamine phenylethylamine two hundred fifty milligram six hourly given for ten days or single dose of long acting penicillin benzodiazepine penicillin long acting penicillin benzodiazepine penicillin is 6 lakh units should be given for body weight less than 60 pound or 12 lakh units should be given body weight more than 60 pound single intramuscular injection this is the treatment of the uh, antibody treatment of the aphorasmic infection this is the then symptomatic treatment what the symptomatic treatment then the situated treatment, uh, then situated treatment, if only carditis, only carditis or only arthritis, then what will be given? 
you give me the silly silence. Silly silence should be given 100 milligram per, per kg of the body per day for two weeks. Then tapering the dose 75 milligram per kg per day for another the four to six. So remember this one. If cardiac with cardiomegaly, if there is cardiac with cardiomegaly, then you give them the prednisolone. Prednisolone 2.5 milligram per kg per day, two divided dose given for two weeks. Then tapering the dose. 1 mg per kg of the body per day for another 2 weeks during tapering the free disolol. Then, cell is again given 75 mg per kg of the body uh, per day for another 2 to 4 weeks. This is the cardiac of cardio cardiomegaly. Next is when, when the patient comes with heart failure, congestive cardiac failure, the treatment of the congestive cardiac failure, flow prop position, oxygen relation, diuretics. And digitalization, this is the treatment of the congestive cardiac failure. Then, then the treatment of the chorea. Chorea, treatment of the chorea, that is mild chorea treated by only said is only diziform. And severe chorea treated by heliferidol 0 0.01 to 0.05 milligram per kg of the body. This is the treatment of the chorea. And, and Erythema marginitum and subcutaneous nodule needs no need to give any treatment. Now, you should give the what do you what do you mean by primary primary uh, prophylaxis? What do you mean by secondary prophylaxis? Very much important. What is primary prophylaxis? And another one is uh, secondary prophylaxis. <laughs> primary prophylaxis means antibody treatment of the antibody treatment of the upper respiratory infection. To prevent the initial attack of the rheumatic fever, this is called primary prophylaxis. What do you mean by secondary prophylaxis? This is the antibody treatment of the upper aspiratic infection for all of this individual who had already been suffering from rheumatic fever. This is called secondary prevention. Remember this. Now, how many days secondary prevention should be given? Secondary prevention should be given at least five years from the recent attack. At least five years from the recent attack or 21st birthday up to 21st birthday whichever is the longer and another one is yes, rheumatic fever with re, or rheumatic heart disease is rheumatic fever with rheumatic heart disease then secondary formal exercise should be given lifelong remember this secondary formal exercise should be given for lifelong remember this now you tell the some what are the other causes of the what are the other causes of the or the other causes of the chorea, there is several chorea. One is genetic types of chorea. Genetic types of chorea means Huntington chorea and Wilson disease. Then some drugs, phenobarbital, phenytoin, uh, oral contraceptive, this is called the chorea. Another one is pregnancy induced chorea. Another one is hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism may cause chorea. This is all about, this is all about, remember this one. This is all about us about the remote fever. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for patient hearing.